What's going on, everybody? Uh, we are here with our uh, second part to our Nino Kuni uh, uh, quick look, I guess you can call it. Um, this is the uh, we're, we're going to be doing uh, two more uh, two more different gameplay levels. I'm here. I'm joined by Steven Akana, uh, the brand manager on Nino Kuni Two. Hey, how's it going, everyone? And uh, we're going to check out some of the uh, new stages, right? Yeah. So uh, let's jump into uh, the battle for the Heartland. Yes, let's do that. Um, so this is a little bit different than what we're used to seeing in the other videos that you're uh, playing as uh, Chibi Evan. Yeah, no, this is, uh, so there's two different visual looks that are in uh, Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom. When you're in the overworld, uh, the environments are very realistic. So it's kind of taking these chibi characters juxtaposed against a uh, realistic looking environment. Once you get into a dungeon, it goes into that more traditional uh, anime looking feel, which we'll actually get into in the uh, other stage that we're going to be showing today. Sure, sure. And then the uh, the other thing I notice is it's not your traditional, you know, third person walking around. This is a strategy element to the game. Yeah, it has uh, some kind of elements of uh, a real-time strategy. So uh, think about, like, you know, you're able to uh, take and dispatch your uh, your infantry and go into uh, little overworld battles where, uh, depending on which type of uh, characters you dispatch, which leaders you have for different groups, it can uh, change the course of how your battle functions. So in this demo, we're actually showing um, in... The game, Evan and his crew, they need to find a place where they can set up their uh, their own kingdom. Uh, we recently announced that in Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom, Evan's going to be creating his own kingdom called Evermore. So right now they're in the you know world and they're saying, oh, we can go ahead and build some uh, build our country over here. But there's a bunch of pesky bandits, so he has to go through and. Uh, clear out the land of, of bandits yeah pretty much. and it's a nice way for people to kind of get in and see how there's different functions that you can do it's you're rotating your uh characters with the uh l uh l1 and r1 buttons on the controller and then uh there's different uh advantages to having different types of characters up in your lead point uh right now i'm trying to make sure that all my archers stay in the back so that they can still attack while not being uh taken down by the enemies in front of them but you can also uh, speed up your attacks and charge at them. Um, it's, uh, it's it's pretty cute. Yeah. Are, are you controlling your armies in real time, or are they just following you? Uh, yeah, you're controlling them in real time. So you're you're uh, navigating throughout the planes. You're rotating them uh, as you see fit and uh, making all the different commands to make them do uh, various attacks. That is really cool. That definitely brings another element to this game. It uh, you know I thought it would be just a straight up uh, JRPG, but like bringing this like brings a level of variety to the game yeah it it really uh gives you a a nice sense of feeling that you are a king that's commanding a, a group of people i mean the the simulation of of becoming a king and ruling over your own kingdom is uh very prevalent in nino kuni 2. now are you just controlling evan the entire time you're doing these types of battles or are you able to switch between the different characters so uh, right now in this one, um, you're you're gonna have Evan as a central point. If you see the two different characters that are on the side, um, you're able to uh, dispatch different allies that will uh, go out with you and will have different types of attacks. So right now, I'm going to uh, execute a uh, special tactic. Uh, I can call in some uh, airstrikes uh, thanks to one of the guys that I have uh, dispatched in my group. This truly does feel like a strategy game right now. That is that is pretty cool. Um, so uh, the armies you're controlling, they're just like just fodder pretty much. They're, they're not like specific characters in the story or anything. They're not like soldiers you find or talk to or anything like that. Well, each of the guys that you see in the bottom corner, they're specific characters. So as you go through, uh, through the world of Nino Kuni, Evan's going to be looking for and recruiting different people to become citizens of Evermore. And as you go out to different battles, each person has uh, different types of abilities. So you get to choose exactly uh, how you want to be fighting in these uh, in these areas. It's not just like you know you, you go out and it's a and it's a preset uh, preset menu. Uh -huh. You're actually getting to choose and there's flexibility. Gotcha. And as you're going further and further into this level, like it, it's getting more and more detailed. Like first you're, you know, you started out in this open field. Now you're behind these encampments. You got these archers coming down on you. It's pretty interesting how, how uh, the, the, the battles evolve. Oh, called in another airstrike. What are those? Are those flying turtles or? They're, uh, they're sky pirate planes. Oh, so, okay. You know, um, the, the characters that you have, they are um, part of the sky pirates crew. I see. 
and uh, I don't know if you can discuss this. Is, is there a, a story element to why he's getting into these battles other than, you know, hey, he's got to clear the land? Like, is, is there something that, like, uh, I guess proceeds before you get into, like, the first type of, like, encounter like this? Uh, well, I mean, like, contextually, it, it makes a lot of sense that this is at the first point where um, Evan's going to start building his kingdom. So both Skirmish, uh, which is this mode, and um, Kingdom Mode, which is the simulation uh, kingdom uh, development, where you can uh, do a lot of those uh, things that you would expect in an RPG, like being able to research new magic, new attacks, um, a bunch of different other items that we've actually uh, yet to unveil. Uh, but it makes a lot of sense for right when he's trying to decide exactly what land uh, he's going to be setting up shop. That this is where you learn about uh, about this, um, this function. Gotcha. And I, are the are your armies upgradable? Like, are you able to upgrade your archers with uh, with stronger bows? Are you able to upgrade your soldiers with better armor? Uh, yeah. No. There's um, a lot of different. Uh, there's different types of. Uh, of infantry that you're able to dispatch. In this one, there's only the, the archers and the foot soldiers. Uh -huh. uh, but as you see in the top right corner, there is an element of a bit of uh, rock, paper, scissor. I see that, um, yeah. That will really kind of dictate which uh, enemies you're more um, uh, more advantageous against. And uh, when you go into the full game, uh, right now there's only two different groups that you're utilizing, but you can utilize up to four. So uh, there's a lot of strategy in being able to uh, choose the right group that you set out with. Um, and I believe uh, today we uh, released uh, a bunch of new content, like uh, we put out our making a video. Yes. And uh, there was a couple cuts of um, footage that we also provided, and one of them is a longer form uh, skirmish battle that you can see where you're actually going in, you're fighting some wyverns, and you can actually be pretty dynamic as you progress through. But, yeah, and um, this one's a great way of just kind of, you know, coaxing people in and making sure that they understand what the gameplay flow feels like. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you'll be able to see those on the on the Bandai Namco social media channels. You'll see them. You can definitely check them out on our YouTube channel. Uh, we'll have posts about them on Twitter, Facebook, etc. Um, so that was the that was the army battles. Yep. Uh, now we are going to get into something a bit more traditional in terms of Nino Kuni too. Uh, we're going to get into the Wyvern battle. Yeah. So this is a, a great way of being able to see how some of the instance battles occur in the overworld, but then also jumping into a dungeon and fighting a mid-scale uh, boss. I'm excited to see this. I have not, so this is this. Uh, I, I, I don't I don't know if I want you to split. Will this be a boss battle? Will there be a boss battle, or is it just enemies like fodder? I guess we're gonna find out. Oh, in, in this Yeah, in, in this, this demo here, in this one here. Oh, that's what I just said. So, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm paying attention. Hey. So we get a little bit of uh, dialogue here. Uh, yeah, so in the story at this point, uh, basically Roland and Evan, they've uh, met the Sky Pirates, and uh, Batu, who's the head of the Sky Pirates, is letting him know about uh, his adopted daughter, Tani, who has been recently abducted by a group of wyverns. And basically the group, they they saw like, oh, you know, the wyverns have come through and they've, they've stolen Tani and, and, you know, well, she's gone now. And uh, Evan and Roland really decide that, you know, this is unacceptable. We're going to go and um, we're going to go and save her. So that's what our uh, our mission at hand Objective is right is now. Okay, cool. Okay, so now we're back into the chibi versions here. Do you prefer TV or you just call them something else? Uh, I mean, like I watch a lot of anime, and and you know, if I was to look at these, I'd definitely be like, oh, they're they're chibi. They're mm -hmm. you know, small body, big head, uh, yeah. super cute. Uh, one of the things you can't really tell while just watching the video, but you know, these little sparkly items, you're able to walk through and uh, collect different uh, pieces, either uh, gold that you can use for spending or uh, different items that are used for crafting within your kingdom, and. Uh, a lot of games, like, you'll see items, you have to walk up, you gotta press a button to be able to actually pick up the item, but you just walk through them in this one, so it's actually kind of nice. You're just going from piece to piece and give me all the things. <laughs> um, so here we see a little bit of the combat. Uh, I don't know if you remember last time, Steven, but Roland had a different sword the last time we played the... The first time we did the uh, quick look. Yeah. No, there's different there's different swords that, uh, and different weapons that you're able to equip to all the different characters. Nice. That's okay, cool. so that is customizable. Mm -hmm. That is cool. 
Yeah, and one of the screenshots we actually put out today, there's also um, different costumes that you're able to equip. So uh, we just showed one uh, image, and it's of Evan wearing Oliver's costume. Oliver being from the first, you know, that's you, right. You know, I saw he was wearing the blue thing. tunic, right? Yeah. That looks so cool. That that is a nice callback to yeah, the, I'm the super first excited. What just happened there? That was a lot of exploding. So when uh, when you're in a battle, there is uh, uh, higgledies that will accompany you. Mm-hmm. And uh, the different Higgledies have different uh, different abilities that they're able to utilize. So I was just using one of the dark elemental Higgledies, and they uh, provide a uh, dark matter um, uh, attack. Mm. Um, but when you see those uh, circles of influence that uh, you can walk into, uh, there's an icon that lets you know that you can press a button. And as you do that, then the uh, Higgledies will take on those commands. Uh, but then also at the same time, uh, throughout the battle, they'll do... Uh, you know, different things to kind of, um, you know, uh, draw aggro, and uh, they're they're almost like your your passive uh, a passive party member. So in this demo, you can only um, you can only play as Evan, but in the full game, you're able to switch between all of your other party members on the fly. So if there's a full game, I could switch uh, directly over to Roland, and uh, once you get to a certain point in the game, you're able to have two other party members. So you'll have three people plus the Higgledies. It kind of makes it a full set of four. Cool. Uh, one thing I did notice while you're traversing around this area is the scale of the like the map looks huge in this game. Yeah, no, it's it's really big and it's it's gorgeous. Like being able to to walk through and just see this this world that you know right now it's it has a very you know mountainous desert kind of look and feel but uh there's a lot of different world environments that really creates a lot of variety for um your adventures and exploration in new mckinney yeah uh referencing back to the uh the video that we put up the behind the scenes uh it actually uh uh hino-san he talks a lot about uh golden paw in that video which is another uh, area in the maps right so yeah, a uh, lot of variety. Yeah, that place. It's um, it's actually they modeled it after. Uh, it, you'll you, if you check out the first behind the scenes, uh, enter the anime video that we put out. Uh, there's uh, a little bit more information about it, but it's cool because they referenced uh, Taiwan when um, thinking about the uh, the design. So like thinking about like night markets stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And the team actually went there and did a lot of uh, creative explorations to make sure that the uh, visual aesthetic really met what they were trying to achieve. Uh, I think it's pretty cool in how the team really focuses on uh, research and the way that they uh, handle their uh, creativity and creation. Definitely. Bringing back to the map, actually, um, I don't know if you know, but on uh, we actually just uh, opened up a special promo where if you pre-order the game on the Bandai Namco store, and we'll have a link in the description of the video, uh, you're, av you're actually able to get a full or like a, a replica of the map of the world. It's a, it's a pretty nice looking map, sturdy. Um, it, it, it's definitely got that old school feel to it. Um, so if you're into that, be sure to check it out um, at, at the uh, on the description. Just click the link, and you'll be able to see. Uh, uh, the map on the Ben and Apple store. Yeah, Definitely a, check it out. It's a nice little bonus for uh, getting the collector's edition. Yes, yeah. So if you pre-order the collector's edition of the game from the Ben and Apple store, you'll be able to get it. Um, and we'll have a uh, we'll have like a, a, a little slide at the end showing you what it looks like and stuff like that. So you'll be able to check it out and see if that's uh, something you're into. But I highly recommend it if you are a completionist or a collector. So now you are battling mini rivers yeah so you know when you get into uh battles as you saw like you know you're walking on the map you can identify um enemies that are uh that are there and you can uh, either walk into them to be able to jump into battle or uh you can uh, simply run away and avoid them if that's uh what you need to do at the time one thing i notice is the enemies actually appear in that so there are no random battles or how does that? How did the? How do the battles look? You're always able to see the uh, the enemies on the map. Yeah, there's no there's no like you know walk through a field and then just like a random you know screen crash and you know, okay. it goes into a battle. You're you're gonna know if you're gonna go into one in the overworld. When you're inside of a dungeon, uh, all the battles are seamless. So you're actually going from one battle to another. There's no like result screen or you know victory screen. Mm -hmm. um, it just kind of uh, continues from one to another. And you were talking about the party members earlier. I, I, I think we revealed uh, two more party members, right, in the latest video. Um, there's, um, I, I can't remember her name. She's kind of a mechanic. Uh, Bracken. Bracken, and, that's right. Uh, Zip Vector. Yeah. 
And so, uh, the the second character, what was it? I can't pronounce it. Uh, is it Vector? Z Vector, yeah. Uh, at first, I thought he was a bad guy. Looking at the old videos, he's a, he. If you guys seen any of the old videos, he's the guy with the glasses typing on the computer. Um, but he actually is part of your team at one point. Uh, you know, you're going to have to experience the game to be able to find okay. out more about these these characters. Okay. Um, you know, it's it's kind of it's a little it's a little difficult like when thinking about like you know promotions for for Nino Kuni where it's like there's a lot of characters that we want to you know give uh visibility to but then at the same time like one of the major joy points is really the discovery of uh story and uh you know we want to make sure that we're not necessarily uh, throwing out too many spoilers for people agreed i was getting a, i was getting a little bit ahead of myself i'm, I'm just excited about the game like the, the the characters and the story and the character design uh is just amazing in this thing like all of them have these really intricate costumes evan's cape just Super detailed, and each one has like their own personality. I love it. Are we getting close to the boss? I'm yeah, I think I'm gonna try to rush past these other guys so I can get into the dungeon. Let's see. Distract you. No, oh, oh, is he gonna catch you? Nope, nope. I got fast little legs. Oh. Oh, what happened? Where'd he go? Classic video game enemies. They just stop. Mm -hmm. Now we just go in there, rescue Tani, and we're done, right? Call it a day. Yeah, no so issues. so easy, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the way it should be. I, I think that's the way it goes. <laughs> Although, if you're walking into a cave that's made out of ribs, I don't know. That's questionable. Yeah, so as you can see, you know, we've entered into a dungeon. Yes. And uh, it's taken on that more uh, anime-looking feel. Mm -hmm. And if there was uh, any uh, enemy... Uh, you know, battles to be had before you enter or uh, approach the boss, you would actually um, just run into them, take them down, and continue forward. But um, once you go into this dungeon in particular, you're going straight into the boss battle. I still can't get over how smooth the frame rate is. Like, it, it, I haven't seen a drop. Every, no, no stutter. It's just fluid, I guess is the best way I can describe it. I mean, that's something that's really important when you figure that, you know, one of the main objectives of the team is to create an experience that really leads the line between uh, a, a video game and a, a theatrical experience. Yes. So um, there was a lot of care taken into just that, that pacing and quality standard to make sure that, you know, you can become immersed and there's no uh, jarring moments that are really going to pull you out of uh, that fantasy. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I'm also loving is the music uh, by Joe Hisashi. Uh, Hisai Joe Hisishi? Hisishi, I'm sorry, I pronounced it wrong. I was thinking of uh, a different character in a fighting game. <laughs> but yes, him. Uh, it's epic is the best way I can describe it, I guess. Um, do you have any like uh, tidbits you can give us about the music? Was was he pumped about it? Did, did, did he like working on the project? Yeah, I mean, it was a very collaborative effort uh, with all the talent that came together for um, Nino Kuni 2. I mean, you know, we're so lucky to be able to, you know, have the, uh, you know, um, Johi Sishi back and, and lending, you know, his talents to this game. Um, it was very essential in in how the quality of the first game really came together, and the fact that you know he's been involved in so many um, so many uh, Ghibli projects before that it really helps uh, uh, establish a uh, an experience that is something really special. And uh, you know he uh, utilized the um, he worked with the Tokyo Philharmonic Orchestra to do all the recording for all the game music. Oh, okay. Wow, I didn't know that. All right, that's awesome. Uh, what, what? I guess, what kind of style would you, would you say that this game's music is? Is it more like operatic? Is it smooth jazz, country? Well, I mean, the the music has a it does have a very um, a theatrical feel to it. But when you know creating a soundtrack to a game there is a lot of differences in how you would compose something say for like an orchestra or for a um, uh, a movie or television mm -hmm. there's uh, different things that you have to consider when uh, crafting that type, of, uh, that type of music yeah i mean the music sets the tone for the game and you want to make sure that it you know they they both uh work well with each other um, let's talk about this battle here. So this is the... Why did he kidnap Tani, by the way? 
Uh, or so, can you, I don't know if you can if you can if you can go into that or not. Yeah, well, I mean the 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 wyverns feel that this is their this is their territory. Uh-huh. So um, I'm not gonna say exactly why they kidnapped Tani. Sure. That's, uh, one Once again, the, discovery yeah. is, is what we want is important. Don't want to spoil. It. Okay, fair enough. And it looks like it looks like you're almost yeah you're halfway through with this guy. Yeah. Um, I think I just saw your buddy Lofty come up. Would, uh, am I missing something, or was that just one of the Higgledies that looks like Lofty? Uh, that was probably one of the Higgledy. sun form Ah, uh, okay. Can you talk about a little bit of uh, what? Uh, oh, what just happened there? So if you stun an enemy at the right point, you're able to uh, go into an awakened state where you're able to have uh, overpowered uh, attacks and you can utilize multiple um, uh, multiple special attacks without having to utilize what would have normally been uh, one of those blue gems that you see above the life bar. Mm-hmm. Uh, every time you're doing uh, physical attacks, it helps fill up those gems. Uh, but every time you want to use a special attack or one of your skills, then uh, it's going to require you to um, to continue to hit people and make sure that you have those blue orbs. I see, I see. Um, the other thing, obviously, I think people have noticed is the combat's very different compared to Nino Kuni 1. Nino Kuni 1 was turn-based combat. This is all real-time. Uh, which do you prefer? What feels better? Uh, so, I mean, I love turn-based uh, RPGs. I think that, you know, the, the previous... Uh, Nino Kuni was it was kind of a hybrid um you know there was uh, open movement but when you brought up your uh action palette basically it would freeze the game so you could make uh choices of you know what type of attack you want to do if you want to switch to one of the familiars or one of your other party members um so I think this one actually it it feels very modern um it is a nice way of it, it feels balanced in how you have different uh different things that you're thinking about whether it's like what are the different things that Higgledies can do what is the skill set that Roland has or uh, Tani has or whatever your uh, whoever your other party members are uh, so I think that it actually is uh, it's a nice graduation to uh, a new gameplay style that I think people will uh, really really dig now you mentioned you're able to switch between characters are when you switch between the characters are you still able to control the Higgledies in combat yeah, so, okay. um, you know, no matter who, who your lead point is, uh, they're able to uh, engage with the Higgledies. And uh, if they're offering up a, uh, an attack skill, um, then anyone can activate them. Careful. That was pretty good. The Higgledy flew up there and cut her down. That was dope. Not only do they bat, not only do they attack, they protect. Huh? Uh, are there advantages or disadvantages to using one character instead of another one? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, there's different uh, flexibilities on, you know, the types of weapons that they have, their equipped, so it all depends on a bit of your play style and the enemies that you're facing. What do you think of the uh, the voice cast? Um, I know we're going to have dual audio, we're going to have the English voice actors, and then we're going to have the Japanese uh, voice actors as well, which we actually just had a, uh, a video with the behind the scenes with the Japanese uh, voice acting team. Which do you prefer? Uh, I like them both. I think that, you know, the uh, the localization that was done on the voices, it feels it feels very immersive and it feels uh, extremely appropriate, especially given that, you know, there was uh, a voice cast from the first game that, you know, people highly regarded. So mm-hmm. the fact that, you know, we're able to meet that same caliber again, I think is really great. Uh, but also knowing that, you know, there's a uh, really great uh, Japanese voice cast that has also uh, been working on this title, and they're uh, equally as uh, juiced about it as we are. The guy that plays Batu in Japanese is on point, by the way. Yeah. You gotta watch that video. Like, that rough <laughs> voice he has, I'm like, man, this guy is, like, perfect for the role. Um, and then to counter that, actually, Evan, uh, in the English version, perfectly cast, I think. He's got, like, this quivering, like, uncertainty about himself. For people who really enjoyed uh, Mr. Drippy, I think they'll also really enjoy the uh, narration from Lofty ah, as well. I, I think you're right. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is the two levels for Nino Kuni 2. Uh, once again, if you get a chance, be sure to check out the link at the bottom. If, you, if you're planning on picking up the game, there's the collector's edition of it, which will get you that free map that I was talking about. Definitely take a look at it. It's a really cool collector's item. Um, Steven, is there anything else you want to say before we take off? 
Uh, no, I mean, you know, just check out all the new footage that we've been putting out for Nino Kuni 2. We're super excited. The game is coming out on March 23rd, 2018, and on PlayStation 4 and PC via Steam. So I uh, can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it and enjoy what is going to most definitely be my favorite RPG of 2018. All right, guys, that's it. If you guys like these videos, please let us know in the comments so we know to keep doing them or not. All right, thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Cool.